So welcome to this session on the Tower Designer that comes as part of the power pack for Advanced Steel from Greytech. So the Tower Designer is part of the Structures Vault, which you'll find under the power pack ribbon here. And if you come in, you'll see a new tab that's been added called Tower Designers. Obviously, the command button is here and activating the command button will start the macro. With the dialog that appears in front of us, you can see that an initial basic structure is created. And straight away, we can move in to the geometry tab here. The basis of the tower is based upon cages, segments and fields. So here we have two cages. You can have more if you so wish by adding in another number here. Changing this to three will add another cage body within here. I'm not going to do that for this session. I'm just going to move straight into adjusting the geometry height for the tower for cage one. So if we change that to 20 meters here, we can see that the cage grows. The next thing to look at is the segmentation. So each of the cages is divided into a number of segments. So we can change to the segment tab here. And in this case, I'm going to come down into field number seven here and change to four number. And you can see that the table is repopulated below and the segments are equally divided up. This is because the options have been set up here for fixed cage height. You can come in and make individual adjustments if you want by clicking in the cells inside the table, fixing other ones by checking the box here. The next thing to look at is the leg to leg connections. So between each sex segment, you can actually change where the intersection or the transition between the legs is. In this case, I've offset it by 500 millimeters from the nominal level height. Again, it's set to a vertical height, but there's a sub option here to let it follow along the leg if you so wish. So with that, we just changed to cage two. So now we're looking at the upper part of the tower structure. Come back to the geometry sub tab here, and I'm gonna come in and I'm actually going to change the cage height to 25 meters. With that, the cage will grow. And then similarly, I just want to change the top width here so I can reduce this down. And this puts a slight taper onto the structure. These fields here are variables that you can enter. In this case, under cage two, you can only adjust the top width, not the bottom width. The bottom widths are controlled by here, top width, two meters. And obviously there is a bottom measurement for cage one. Those can be changed if you so wish. And we are working with a square configuration at the moment. Just to come back to cage two, where I've added in so much distance, I want to add in a number of segments within the tower structure. So I'm gonna add five in, and you can see that they're all equally divided. Again, you have leg to leg connections. I'm not going to make any adjustments in this case. The next tab that we'd move to is the vertical bracing. I'm gonna focus upon cage one, first of all. So you can see that there is a tree structure here. We have the tower body, cage one, the different segments that we generated within each of the cages. If you apply bracing at the top level, it will apply throughout the whole tower structure. We don't actually want to do that. And I want to show several different types. So we're gonna come down into the segmentation to apply them. So coming into segment one, we're going to browse down into the bracing type under the bracing type tab and select type K for the first segment here. And then we can select a sub bracing arrangement in here as well. So for this instance, I'm going to change this to S type. I'm also going to enable some inner bracings here and you'll see that the bracings appear there as well. You can control the members under the members tab here. You can control their size and depending on where, again, you pick within the tree structure will affect the changes made within the structure. For this example, I'm going to leave them as they are and I'm just going to move 
to the next segment of the tower under cage one. And in this case, we're going to change to a bracing type of XB. So let's place that within the second segment. I'm going to enable a different type here, which is a type D bracing, and I'm going to enable additional horizontals. If we come into segment three, we can actually use an option here to copy from segment two, and that will actually apply that into segment three of the tower. Segment four, I'm going to do a different type of bracing for this. I'm going to use the XH type of bracing. And in this case, I'm actually not going to put any vertical sub bracing in or web bracing. I'm going to just change the members type and I'm going to come into the diagonals and I'm going to go down to the branch level of diagonal one. And I'm going to change its alignment to be on the inside from this alignment drop down menu. And the brace member will now move to the inside from the outside. So if we move on within the cage structures, we come to cage two. Now I'm actually going to apply the same kind of bracing throughout the whole of the top half of the tower. And we're going to use an XH bracing arrangement. So you can see that's applied that to every cage segment. But what I wanted to do was introduce the fact that we could now change the field. So I'm going to change the fields here to two number for segment one. And the same thing, you can use the contextual menu copy options to copy them into the various other segments. So let's just go copy from segment one. So they're going to all be linked to that. And when I get to segment five, I'm actually going to change it and put the three in there just to make a difference. So you've now got three cages in there. So you can see that the structure has now been created with all the different cross braces within the second tower cage. The next element that we would look at is obviously the tower top. To enable the tower top, you check the box here and you can see that the tower appears as a truncated pyramid on the top. So what we can do also is come in and set the bracing type. So I'm going to change that to XD and that's applied to the tower. The two fields in here set already, so I'm not going to change that. You can change left and right because you've got a couple of different branches of the tree. And please remember that no matter what you do, you can also come in and expand the members tab and you can see all the different levels that you can change and you have all the different options to offset, change the section size, etc. within the dialogue. That is common throughout the macro. So we have the basis of our tower structure created. So we're now going to move and have a look at the arm structure. So if you recall, under cage one, segment one, we had one field and that applies within cage one. So I'm not actually going to apply any arms within cage one. I'm actually going to apply them within cage two. And what I'm actually going to do is come into the fields and apply them at the field level. So we have a type A set here. You have three different types and we'll take a look at those as we walk through placing several arms. So I'm just going to change its length at the moment. So the span will change nine meters from the edge of the tower. You can also alter the end width if you wanted to and the end height. You can affect bracing type again. I'm just going to leave it as a standard form because it's the same options. You can do the whole or you can branch down into here, different faces. And then similarly, you get the different options here to control all the different elements within the tower structure. So again, we can just check the box or you could use the copy to option. 
uh, I'd probably just check the box because I want to make an individual length. I don't actually want them linked together. So if we just change that now, this span will change to that measurement. And same here under this segment. We're going to come in and change the length measurement again. Just move slightly in the model and we'll do the same with segment four. And that's going to come in actually at the default measurement. And then the last one, we're actually going to put this in field two because there was three fields in here just to be different. And we're going to reduce that down. You can move the scroll bar across slightly so you can tr see the tree structure better. And we're just going to enable the tower top. So we're going to check this box here and within the structure, you will see the arms appear at the top. And I just want to do that as a different type here. So I can change that to type B and it will be inverted off the tower top. Again, you have options here to change the length of it. Obviously, you've got a start height and end width etc so you can change several of the variables in there just coming back down into the tower structure let's just come back down into segment three and we're going to change actually to type c and you'll see the tower arm will change so it's actually tapered coming out from the main tower body just zooming into the top of cage one under segment four i just wanted to make reference to the horizontal girt structure that you can sort of see in there the diagonal diamond shaped pattern that's inside the top of the segment so you can change this under the horizontal girt tab so that will put an additional cross brace through the middle that will put it in the opposing direction going the other way a uh, straightforward cross brace horizontal plane uh, cross brace in one direction cross brace in direction two and none if you require so you can turn it off just going to put it back to the original one which was diamond the default uh, there is a box here you can check that so if you wanted to move it away from that location you can move it away from that primary level if you so wished i'm not going to do that for this example i'm just going to leave it where it currently is again members you can come in and uh, select at various different levels within the tree structure and all the options available so that's the basis of the tower created the last part i want to talk about is the library those of you familiar with great macros will know that it is possible to save a library entry in here so use me while i type something So you can create a default in here and just go OK and it will add it into the library table there and store those entries. You can also check this to be the default. So the next time you come back in, you could use that as your default start. So you don't have to start from a blank sort of structure. Similarly, you can store standard configurations. So let's just delete the tower a minute and come back into the macro and select the command button and regenerate the tower to the default that I just stored within the dialog for the library. There are a lot of different options, configurations, different areas that you can change within the tower structure within all the different bracing configurations that are available within the various elements of the cages, the segments, the tower arms, for example, and obviously the tower top as well. So there's a lot that can be changed. Uh, that is a very quick introduction to the basics of the tower 
and how to get started with it.